you know what today is? It's a Wednesday. Oh, makes sense. It's poetic. Deeply. <laughs> to our stupid reactions idiots i'm corbin what's your name my name is cardinal if you know our channel go and smash the like button subscribe and ring that little bell to be part of the notification squad <laughs> please follow us on instagram and turn up juicy content so juicy whoa we was almost like she was in the room with us Crazy man. Uh, so today we'll be doing a movie review. Review! We have a highly requested one after we watched it, well, even before we watched the trailer. It was true. Uh, it's called A Wednesday. And, and we call... talk a lot, so get ready to sit here and enjoy your morning with us. Yeah, they're roughly about 20 minutes. So, mm -hmm. uh, Minimum. enjoy your chai. Yeah. And here we go. So, uh, A Wednesday, want to read the synopsis for me? I will read the synopsis for you. A retiring police officer reminisces about the most astounding day of his career. But a case that was never filed, but continues to haunt him in his memories. The case of a man and a Wednesday. That wasn't in there. You added that. No, that was right plug. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> um, you almost sounded like Voldemort there. It did a little Harry bit. Potter. It did a little bit. Nagini. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's directed by uh, Nerd. You pronounce it. I don't want to give his name. Ner what were you going to say? Oh, well, you didn't finish it. Nope. Don't want to offend him. Niraj, <laughs> Niraj Pandey. Okay. And I he believe. directed a Wednesday special 26, MS Donnie. Right. And he wrote it. Yeah. Uh, and it's starring Anna Bunker and. Uh, I was gonna say Nawazuddin. It's not Nawazuddin. It's no. it's. Uh, I know his face. It's. It's, I'm gonna, it's the dad from the Deborah film. Exactly, <laughs> Naziruddin Shah. Yes. Um, Naziruddin. Those two. Yeah. And it kind of the film opens basically with the synopsis of the. Brent, I just, just read. What I just think read. It was word for word. It comes right out of the guy's <laughs> mouth, sitting on his chair. <laughs> um, and so this was kind of. Um, fed to us as like uh, the reason to watch this film was for the for the acting correct of, the, of this film uh and i i totally 100 percent agree um especially um him yes the the dad from deborah the dad from deborah um but yeah we can get into that uh, this film is quite short i mean not for american films but no 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 but for indian other standards. indian stuff we watch i was yeah. like whoa this is i know this it's is. funny now that we've been watching indian films what did I watch the other night? I watched High Anxiety, the Mel Brooks film, mm -hmm. which is just under, I think, 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. And also Get Out is 90 minutes. Yeah. So I watched those recently and I was like, oh, wow, I'm not even settled in my chair yet. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this happened real fast. Honest, India. This, one, this one went quick. Yes, it did. Yeah. And it, at first, it, like, if this was one of the first ones I watched, I probably would have been more annoyed than I went out to be. Because there's, there's, there's yeah, not... not there's, I, I have a, I have more annoyances than I do pleasures. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I enjoyed this film, and I did, especially towards the end. Yes. Um, and that's basically the reason to watch it. His monologue. His monologue. That's the reason to watch it. It was an incredible monologue. Yeah, my two favorite things about the film are his acting and his final monologue combined, because yeah. that's one, one thing. And I think the premise is brilliant. Yes. And it was, I love the premise. It was remade in a Hollywood film. And I want to see that because it's got Ben Kingsley ben apparently. Ben Kingsley and I think it's called A Common Man. Yeah. Um, I, wa I want to see the remake. Um, but yes, the, the, the film itself, I think it, was, it had to have been a really, really low budget. I also thought this as I watched it and I researched it afterwards. There's several things I researched afterwards mm -hmm. that this was his first directorial undertaking. Oh, it was. And it felt like it. Yeah. Um, it, it definitely had probably and it definitely had budgetary. It did, which well, stuff. and I don't know if one of the th well, we'll get into this in a second because there's one of the things that I know were a challenge with the score, which I found out later on because I had challenges with the score. Yes, the score. Um, we'll talk about that. Yeah. So, but yeah. <laughs> so go ahead. Um, so the the I, I felt like it had a lot. I mean, which makes sense if he was a first time director, he probably didn't have a lot of money to work with. Yeah. Um, and so it, it a lot of the. Stuff obviously we didn't get to see a lot of people that die on screen. Yeah, a lot of the guns looked fake. Yeah, and even, uh, <laughs> even, the, even the lighting, some of the lighting yeah. on some stuff 
you just, I just, I, it bothered me, but at the same time, I'm like, hold up. If it's a first time directorial debut and it's a, it's a low, lower budget kind of thing, they're not going to have the money to do all the bells and whistles that you yeah. would have in like a Padma Vat or a yeah. yes. Pastrami Masahani. Yes. So it's not fair to compare that. And then obviously a lot of the, the, the actors who aren't the main oh. two oh. Uh, weren't. Oh, weren't great. Oh. <laughs> no, um, but the the main two are phenomenal. Solid. No, I I, I loved both of them, especially yeah. the Deborah Dad. But yeah. I knew that in the Deborah film. Yeah, the two guys, the head of police, and the, the we keep calling him Deborah Dad. Those two are the legendary solid. actor. Yes, whatever his name. Nasir and Shah. Yes, <laughs> you're amazing. I, I, and I knew it in the Deborah film. Even right. that small role he had. I was yeah, like, he's like, good. Oh, that guy's really good. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. He is, I'd love to see more of his stuff. And, and his final monologue, that final phone oh, conversation, yeah. is why you watch the movie. Everything builds up so you can reach and that. So I think we can talk about that because... Uh, I, uh, by the way, if you haven't seen this, go away. Yeah, I'll, you're way too late. Yeah, too late now. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they, I think the whole, uh, so like we said, the end of it is the reason to watch it. And I think we... Like we said, we had problems budgetary wise, so that had. And I have, I, some, I have I think, some other things we'll talk about. I think that has a lot to do. Like most of the problems with the film has to do with the lack of budget, the acting potentially. You, yeah, potentially. You you have bad Script. acting, so it means you don't have the best actors. Right. Uh, the breath props, the best CGI. Right. So that that can all be equated to that. So Correct. I don't really want to delve too more into that. That we right. already. Have. I don't want to hammer those things. The score. <laughs> okay, let's talk. You want to talk about the yeah? Music? Let's talk about the score. I okay. don't understand what he was. Maybe it's just, maybe he had to buy just music offline no, and he just put it in there. Okay, so here, I know a couple of things now because I saw the film and the score, the, my first impression of the score when I was watching it was, this thing's freaking clunky. Mm -hmm. What the heck is going on? This thing is just, it's bouncing all over the place. Mm -hmm. Then, we got on the bus with the four terrorists. Yes. Any of those notes ring a bell, Corbin Miles? <laughs> did you recognize that I score? Did, I didn't recognize the score. Oh, I did. Why? What was it from? It's flat out lifted, not just there, but then later on, right after the blowing up of the terrorists. Mm -hmm. Flat out the recording. The It's not like they took the score and re-recorded it. Mm -hmm. He took the actual score from The Passion of the Christ and just put it in. You researched it? Oh, I didn't need to. <laughs> I've seen The Passion of the Christ, I saw it 11 times in theaters, mm -hmm. and I've probably seen it another 10 or 11 since. Just a good popcorn flick. And, <laughs> and uh, this isn't a name drop, it's just the reality of the thing that I'm dealing with here. The guy who plays all of the woodwinds in that, in that score, is his name's Pedro Eustache. He's a friend of mine. I had an extra added benefit and bonus to want to pay really close attention to the score because I wanted to listen to Pedro's work mm -hmm. and knew about him working with John Debney and everything that they did. I know that score so well that the moment it started to play, I not only knew it was Passion of the Christ, I knew what scene he was using it from. Mm -hmm. He took the music from the scene where Jesus is carrying the cross and she sees him and has the remembrance of him as a little kid and runs to him. Mm -hmm. And then he took music from the Last Supper sequence later on. Now, I researched because I was like, where's the controversy on this? Did he get permission from John Debney? Does mm -hmm. anyone else know that? I could Apparently, no one else knows mm -hmm. that this was lifted out of the Passion of the Christ. But I do know this. The, and I want to give him credit because uh, he talked about this, the, the composer. Um, Sanjay Chowdhury. Sanjay did a 17-minute interview that I watched. Mm -hmm. And in that interview towards the, the end, composer of a Wednesday? the composer of a Wednesday, okay. talking about how he scores films and his, his intelligence, and he's the son of a composer, was off the charts as far as knowing how to make a score. Mm -hmm. And he, he talked about a Wednesday and he said that was really challenging for a lot of reasons. First of all, he had to write a lot of the score with no film to work with. Ooh. <laughs> that, that shows, actually. Hence the clunky choppiness. Yeah. Like sometimes like the, like... Right. Like, it was just like this somber moment, and it was like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Right. He just gave a music, and the director placed it in a lot of the spots, versus getting to actually... I think that's a budgetary work. thing again. It's a huge budgetary thing. Yeah. And I w it wouldn't surprise me if either he, or like all composers, if you didn't know this, most really good composers, whether it's India or America, I know this because Pedro works with Hans Zimmer, they've got a team of writers. Mm -hmm. 
who will write their stuff and they'll work with them and they'll plug music into stuff. Mm -hmm. He very well could have had one of his people just find something to use yeah, and got permission from Debney or whoever owns the copyright on that. Yeah. But for me, it was a major like, are you serious? You're, you didn't even, you're using something from the passion of the crowd, which that happens in trailers. When they haven't scored a film, they'll use music that already exists and put in, and you'll go, I know that from somewhere. Mm -hmm. But in the, in the actual, Film, yeah, it's not very. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm wondering. Let me see if IMDb says the budget of this at all, because I think it, it had to have been real low. Yeah, and like, I, real, I'm real assuming. Low. I'm assuming they got permission to use it, and, mm -hmm. and 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 they just they needed to place the music. So, but that makes a lot of sense, though. If yeah, about the score, and because a lot of it just didn't fit at all. <laughs> Like at all, at all. <laughs> like and not it, just the style, but the placement of it. It was a good scene on the bus, though, like uh, with the terrorists and, <laughs> and the guys. Part of the reason is because that's such a great score underneath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. had John Debney and Pedro playing. I, I did like the the main terrorist who they saved, and then later, and then and later, later, later. I thought he did really well. I thought I liked. Him. Yeah, he did. He did do well. Um, but, but okay, and now let's talk about Psycho. Let's talk about Psycho Cop for a second. Oh yeah, yeah. He's uh, a little strange. Okay, first of all, is it really scary that he slapped so hard? I mean, why? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, ooh, wow, don't, here he comes, he's gonna slap me. That's gonna make you wear your pants? It was a lot of, like, remember in KGF? Uh, when yeah. they just freaked out whenever he came in? Yeah, It was but a lot of that, because they were like, oh! <laughs> I would have preferred that. Yeah? I felt like this was if, No, when he was real. beating him on the thing, that's what it was like. Yeah. I think it was... Yeah, I think it was dubbed though. I don't know why they were so scared of him. I never, I never really got that. Yeah. Why they were so scared of this guy. I don't know. I mean, I, mean, like, I know he's like a loose cannon, but it's like... What's he gonna do to you? Yeah. He's gonna slap you <laughs> nonstop. I don't know. <laughs> now, the other thing that I just couldn't handle. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, again, this goes back to budget. Mm-hmm. But the guy's supposed to be a detective, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you notice when he got on the roof? Did you notice how he was handling his gun? I mean, come on. If the if the if your production doesn't have the budget to have people to train your actors how to use handguns, they don't. as an actor, did you not? As an actor, man, please do so. Look now maybe it. they did the research and he's like, okay, I'm from the streets, so I'm gonna handle the the gun the way the gangsters do, because the way he, the side don't handling of the gun again. like that. Don't ever say that again. The side handling of the gun like that. That is stuff that's seen in like the gangsta movies. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> no um, detective or well, cop is gonna hold their gun like this the same, when they're coming around a corner. The, the same thing happened hey, with see my tattoo when I do that. The thing, the same thing happened with all the extras um, when they were transporting the terrorist. Oh, you see, all, oh. all of them around him had I no know, idea it was how so to. So bad. Also, they looked like prop guns. Yeah, they did. But then none of them knew how to. No, hold. they didn't. So, like once again, budget, budget. Yeah. I get it. I get it. <laughs> the story was great, but let's yeah. talk about the end. And let's get back into the story because yeah. that's the meaty thing, and that for me was why I can I can forgive the score, I can forgive the bad, the budget stuff. As a whole, I the story's great. Yeah, the story's phenomenal. The story's fantastic. I enjoyed the film because, especially of the last part of it. Yeah, the last part of it is worth uh, price of admission. Yeah, um, because the, he does such a great job with that model. Also, it's just you don't know what to think. And that was actually shot really well. Yeah, which I don't, which I, I didn't understand how he knew where he was in the end. Do you know? Uh, how he tracked where he was? I don't know how the, how like he how he figured just it out. went to the, his apartment at the end. Right. So maybe I missed something. Yeah, me too. I, I, I must have missed something I too. was confused at that, like uh, how he went and I was like, oh, is he going to kill him? And then he was like, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't know if he was going to pull a sartage or not and like be the righteous guy and then not be the right. But I, ju I just didn't know how that's like, how did he know where he right, was? Where like, oh, I'm, <laughs> And also, how did the sketch artist draw an absolutely perfect picture of him? Yeah. <laughs> but I did, I did enjoy the ending because it left you with questions like, how would you feel in this scenario? Well, I love yes, it when let's films, talk all about that. I love it when films do that. I do too. Because, you know, like, you, <laughs> he's, he's being a common man who is right. tired of these awful people. Did you see that coming, by the way? Did you see that twist? Or did you think he was a terrorist freeing terrorists? I saw something coming. Okay. I, I thought he was just a guy freeing terrorists and they were going to have to stop the guy. I didn't see that twist. I'd, I think I called it because I was like, this guy is so unassuming as a bad guy. Yeah. He doesn't seem like a bad guy. Right. He doesn't act like a bad guy, which is another great part of the, the story. Yeah. And, and his acting. Right. Um, but I, I don't think I called it specifically, but I, I figured something like that was coming. Yeah. Um, I was like, this is not the whole story here. Right, but um, 
I love the conundrum at the end about, yeah, is this a good thing? Right. Because he says in the end, I don't know if it was good, I don't know if it was bad. Right. Um, but then he went there and thanked him for doing what they couldn't do right. as cops. Right. Um, Which on the one hand, you don't know, he's like, you're, these are people, you're not right. supposed to murder people. Right. But these are terrorists, they deserve to die. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so do you take justice into your own hands? Yeah. It's I, like the vigilante kind of thing, right. Batman kind of thing. And I, I love several things about the final, the final last 15 minutes, which is mostly comprised of that phone conversation. Yeah, great. Hard to carry um, a scene like that, which he did. Yeah, right. and beautifully directed. Mm -hmm. It was where I felt the director really put all of the focus and the attention into, you didn't need a budget anymore, you didn't need to worry about lighting. He's just on a building. Just film him talking. Just just let it roll and just capture him. And with an actor like acting. that, you yeah. gotta do that. Capture him acting and capture the other guy on the phone. But the writing, I thought, was so freaking fantastic with him. To... It's my ringtone. It's gonna get copyrighted. That's true. I turned it off. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, he, he the conversation of him talking several things. First of all, on the train. When he asked him, he says, did you lose a loved one on that train? Mm -hmm. And he says, yeah, there was a young guy. And he's talking about all of those mm -hmm. people. And how when he got on the train, they were all gone. It's like, do I have to... Do, does it have to be a loved one for me to... For it to impact me? Mm -hmm. Like, when we had the, the shooting here mm -hmm. at, at Borderline, mm -hmm. that hit home. I, you guys probably didn't know about this, but you may have heard about it. A shoot, I mean, you hear about shootings in America, what, every six, seven hours? Mm -hmm. And there was a shooting here very close to us, and at Borderline, it hit home because that's where Ashley and Harrell went every Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. They just happened to not be there that night. Mm -hmm. um, and knew people who were there. It shouldn't have to get that personal yeah. for you to take it personally. But then it's also the question, it's like, is killing them the right answer? Right. Is it not the right? I, I love that they didn't definitively I, say you know, I, you know, right? They left it up to yeah, us. Yeah, which yeah. which is I believe what film should do. Absolutely should. And even it up to the people. Even, Don't give it a tie and a bow. Even the the thing where he said my name is, and he said I'm yeah. not going to give you his name because if I give you his name, you'll tie him to a religion. Mm -hmm. And I love that they wouldn't let that. You've got to decide for yourself. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was. Maybe he wasn't. You don't know his motivations entirely. The bottom line is, talk about it, is that, I gotta say, there's something very satisfying to think that someone would just take the justice into their own hands when the law enforcement and the military or anyone else isn't getting it done, and you're seeing innocent people. There's something very satisfying You know what they should about do? That. The same director who did um, Arjun Reddy mm -hmm. is doing the Kabir Singh. Oh, okay, it's yeah. The same director. Oh, really? It's same story. Right, I knew it was the same story. I didn't realize it's the same director. Same director. Ah. They should do that with him now like since he will now have a budget yeah so redo this film and make it how it was supposed to be made be, uh, i don't ben, i mean clearly there's a market for it well that's can... that's why i want to see the ben kingsley one because the story is so good yeah that i'd like to see another incarnation of it and ben kingsley will be phenomenal yeah. i'm assuming he plays the common man yeah and uh depending on, upon the direction and they'll have clearly with kingsley it'll have a higher budget yeah um but that for me this thing you can i can i'm with you as nitpicky as i want to be about the lighting and the score and the holding the guns the right way i ended up enjoying it in the end me too well, I ended up enjoying it, and I would tell anybody who's going to watch this, I'd say, would you please forgive the fact that this is a directorial debut Think who probably it, had no money. Think of it like almost almost like a, a upscale student film. I was exactly what I was thinking. Not, Think of it not that like way. an independent that has no money. No, 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 no. But like an upscale student yeah, film that has film. some phenomenal actors. An in. AFI thesis film mm -hmm. that they get heavyweight people to do something in that is worthy of accolades, because it is. But it doesn't um, have the budget to do everything it wants. Yeah, to. and you gotta, I'm sure a lot of those actors that were like, oh, they were they probably never acted. Maybe did it for free, mm -hmm. you know? So they get a pass on all of that. Yeah. Yeah. But the story itself is the reason to watch this film. Yeah. Um, and totally. that, and the acting of those two main leads. Yeah. I want to see more of him. For sure. Uh, he was apparently in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which I... Oh. I mean, I, I, saw, I, haven't seen I that. saw that when it came out, but... <laughs> For a split second, I thought it also said he was in Ishtar. I'm sorry. He, he, but he wasn't. He wasn't. <laughs> Do you guys know Ishtar? Oh. But I mean, the, don't, don't watch it. 
Um, but yeah, please let us know what you think of it. Let us know what we should watch and review next. Nasiruddin, I think. Nasiruddin and... Shaw. Yeah, he's so good. Yeah, he's phenomenal. I want to see a lot more of his stuff. Let Me us know too. what other stuff of his we should react to. He's in the upcoming... Oh, Tashkent Tash Files. Which, the reason we haven't watched it yet is because it's, no, it's, not, it's not playing it's, anywhere It's not here us. yet. It's, it's here, but the closest theater is like 50 miles away. Exactly. Sorry, guys, I'm not going 50 miles for a movie. No. 